Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about my top 40 running back rankings and tiers for the 2023 fantasy football season. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure they do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. And if you would like to purchase my rankings, they are on Patreon for $7.50, half PPR, as well as full PPR rankings. So without further ado, let's get into my top 40 running back rankings and tiers for the 2023 fantasy football season. We begin with the S tier at the running back position, Christian McCaffrey of the San Francisco 49ers. Now, earlier today, some news came out about Christian McCaffrey potentially getting his workload lessened because of the fact that the San Francisco 49ers want to keep him healthy. At the end of the day, will losing a couple of touches game in and game out hurt Christian McCaffrey definitely but will it make a significant mark in his value at the end of the season probably not right if the San Francisco 49ers are in a close game they're in a shootout they need to score at the end of the game they're not taking Christian McCaffrey out for Elijah Mitchell they're going to take Christian McCaffrey out when they are plowing a defense in the game right they're already up by a gazillion entering into the fourth quarter well guess what if they're already up by a gazillion points Christian McCaffrey probably already had a pretty solid fantasy football outing so while it does suck when you actually look into it the impact is going to be minimal I still think McCaffrey has a very easy shot to be the RB1 in fantasy at number two we have Bijan Robinson of the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I did have to dip Austin Eckler from running back two to running back three to move B. John Robinson up, but at the end of the day, we saw how good Tyler Algier and Caleb Huntley looked last season, and B. John Robinson is on a whole nother level compared to those guys, right? B. John Robinson, an early first round NFL draft pick. This is a guy that is a generational talent, the best running back coming out of college since Saquon Barkley. B. John Robinson has pass catching upside, and and if Desmond Ritter is just better than he was and Marcus Mariota were last season, which isn't even that hard of an ask, I really think Bijan Robinson could finish the year as the running back number one. And it wouldn't shock me at all if in next year's fantasy football drafts, the number one overall pick in terms of consensus was Bijan Robinson at number three. Again, we had to dip Austin Eckler down, but that's not really anything against Eckler. This guy is still one of the best running backs in fantasy football for PPR and half PPR leagues because of how much receiving volume this guy sees game in and game out. So sure, they did lose their offensive coordinator, but we know deep down, Justin Herbert, the pervert, has it ingrained in his mind to dump the rock off to Austin Eckler. I think he's going to be just fine in this new system. I think Austin Eckler, again, the receiving value is just so important in fantasy football. Any of these guys could finish as the RB1, and it really wouldn't be all that shocking. Moving to the A tier, we got Tony Pollard, 9-inch Nicholas Chubb, Josh Jacobs, and Saquon Barkley. So Tony Pollard is my RB4. I did move 9-inch Nicholas Chubb down one spot, mainly just because I feel like under the franchise tag, Tony Pollard is just going to be ran directly into the dirt. He's going to be so far into the dirt that he's going to run into the Pokemon Diglett. Tony Pollard looked really, really good last season, and he wasn't even the main back for a majority of the season. They still tried to run out the guy who looked like he was running in molasses in Ezekiel Elliott. So I'm very excited about the upside that Tony Pollard possesses. Great pass catcher as well and them losing their offensive coordinator and Kellen Moore who didn't really like to design up pass catching opportunities for the running back should be a solid bump for Tony Pollard the biggest question with Tony Pollard is his build right he's not this super big running back will he be able to hold up for the whole season that is definitely a question to have but I'm as much of a doctor as Johnny Sins, so I still really do believe in Tony Pollard. I think a high workload is coming his way. At number five, nine-inch Nicholas Chubb of the Cleveland Browns. So the Browns don't bring in Kareem Hunt, so we are going to be seeing Nick Chubb catch a couple of more passes game in and game out. Now, they did bring in another running back behind him, so I don't necessarily think he's going to magically get like 80-plus targets on the season, but could he get 50 or 60? I definitely think that is possible. I think the Cleveland Browns offense is going to step up 
in a big way this season. I think Deshaun Watson is going to bounce back. Thus, this offense will be a lot better. They'll be given a lot of red zone opportunities, and I think Nick Chubb flourishes in this offense. Again, even with the trials and tribulations of the Browns offense last year, Nick Chubb was amazing. So if Deshaun Watson figures it out, the upside's really high for Chubb. At number six, Josh Jacobs of the Los Vegas Raiders. Josh Jacobs ending up signing his deal with the Raiders. There was a lot of worries about him potentially holding out, so we had to bump him up the rankings. This was a guy that was ran into the dirt last season, kind of like what I see the Dallas Cowboys doing with Pollard. And now he's back on a one-year deal yet again to probably do the exact same thing. I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo's this huge downgrade to the offense. We finally saw Josh Jacobs start to catch some passes last season, and I think he's going to have yet another solid season again. At number seven, to close out the A tier, we got Saquon Barkley of the New York Football Giants. Brian Dave Bull really turned the kind of tide of this offense. Daniel Jones looked a lot better last season. Their offensive line is pretty decent. Saquon Barkley still one of the better running backs in the National Football League on a one-year deal. Another scenario where maybe he gets ran into the dirt. Saquon Barkley should be solid yet again. I'm not as excited about Barkley as the guys ranked ahead of him, but at the end of the day, if Saquon finished as the RB4, really no one should be shocked, right? We all know how good Barkley is, and this offense might be able to get even better in the second year of the Brian Dable system. Moving to the B tier, we got just one guy, and that is Derrick Henry of the Le Thons. Now, Derrick Henry is getting up there in age, and his yards per carry number has essentially dipped over the last three years. At the end of the day, though, we know how much volume he's going to see. He got an increased passing workload last season. Now, he's not going to go out there like Alvin Kamara and catch like 80 fucking passes or something, but could he get... 30 receptions, definitely. I think this team gets a nice boost up because of DeAndre Hopkins right in the red zone. If DeAndre Hopkins wasn't there, they were going to stack the box because they knew the Derrick Henry train was going to smash through the offensive line, smash through the defensive line, stiff arm a poor bastard into Middle Earth, and run directly into the end zone. But now they have to worry about D-Hop as well. The question is, will Derrick Henry be able to keep up with such a high workload? Will he be able to get... 300 plus carries again in 2023 or will eventually the wheels of Tractor Cito fall off? Those questions put him in a tier of his own. The B tier. Again, I definitely feel more confident in him than the guys below him, but knowing the, you know, the drop-offs in terms of efficiency, he kind of just sits in his tier below the A tier guys. Moving to the C tier, we got a bunch of guys running backs 9 through 13. At number 9, Ramondre Stevenson of the Patriots. Now, initially when they signed Zeke, I started to feel like, yeah, he's going to be fine. And then I started to feel like, oh shit, this might be DEFCON 5. Zeke's going to score a bunch of touchdowns. And then I had epiphany. It cost me 50 at Tiffany. Shout out to Tiffany Stephanie about Ramondre Stevenson. This motherfucker only scored like 5 touchdowns last season so even if Zeke's getting in there on the goal line jamming the rock into the end zone Ramondre Stevenson was successful without a high amount of touchdowns so if he just scores like five touchdowns again and he's still the number one back on the team the guy catching all the passes and the offense is better because last year they were absolutely putrid Ramondre Stevenson should be just fine but there is more added risk now that Zeke is there at number 10 Jameer Gibbe of the Detroit Lions Jameer Gibbs Jameer Gibbs is in a really solid situation situation the Lions were one of the best rushing offenses in the National Football League last year in terms of fantasy football Jared Goff is a pretty decent quarterback and I think that Jameer Gibbs is going to be given a lot of opportunity to touch the ball the biggest downside of Jameer Gibbs is just like with Ramondre Stevenson when they get to the goal line you know who's getting the ball now Stevenson is bigger than Gibbs But we know that once they mosey their way on in, Billy Strutt to the goal line, that David Montgomery is going to come into the game and in a way, cuck Jameer Gibbs. Now, at the end of the season, if Gibbs is just getting a million targets, getting a lot of receptions, receiving yards, it's not really going to matter. 
but that is definitely something to discuss. At number 11, Joe Mixon of the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a guy that a lot of people are avoiding, and rightfully so, right? His efficiency has dipped, and he hasn't looked like the same running back he looked like a couple of years ago. But at the end of the day, there's something to be said about a consistent amount of volume. We know for sure that Joe Mixon's going to be the lead back on the Cincinnati Bengals. We know for sure he is going to be the workhorse back on this team, and he is going to catch passes. So while Joe Mixon is not the same running back he's been over the last couple of years, no one can argue that he still looks the same because that would just be crazy to say. But I don't think he's over the hump, right? I don't think he's entering Zeke category where it looks like the guy's running in fucking quicksand, right? I don't think that's the case for Joe Mixon. Obviously, it sucks that he isn't as efficient, but I still think Joe Mixon's a decent enough running back to succeed this season. Moving to the RB12, A.A. Ron Jones of the Green Bay Packers. Now, a lot of people are scared to draft Aaron Jones because of Jordan Love, right? If Aaron Rodgers was still there, everyone would be on their knees giving the gawk gawk 9,000 Aaron Jones. But Nick, they have A.J. Dillon still. Yeah, but A.J. Dillon has proven that he's not going to catch passes. When push comes to shove, they're in opportunities to catch passes. It's not going to be A.J. Dillon. It's going to be Aaron Jones. We know Aaron Jones has big game upside. We've seen the games where he scores three touchdowns, throws his, his sombrero on, on the sideline, and hits the fucking Victor Cruz salsa, right? Aaron Jones is an incredible running back. His work load has lessened because of AJ Dillon he's gonna get vultured sometimes on the goal line but he has insane week-to-week upside to score 25 30 plus points and I think people are highly undervaluing the skill set of Jordan Love at number 13 Damian Pierce of the Houston Texans every single thing out of preseason has shown us that Damian Pierce is a three down workhorse running back now is he going to catch a lot of passes probably not But Devin Singletary isn't either. Devin Singletary reeks to high heaven. You can smell the stink of Devin Singletary through your TV when you throw a Houston Texans game on. Damian Pierce was very successful last year with Davis Money Mills under center with an offense that moved the ball at the pace that old people fuck. An incredibly slow pace and still Damian Pierce looked good so if he can just add on a couple of receptions every single game and now the Texans offense doesn't look putrid Damian Pierce is in a decent situation this season to have that year that a lot of people thought he would have last season moving now to the D tier this is where things start to get grim this is where I start to typically start jamming a lot of receivers even if I already have Uh, I start off the draft with just one running back. I might draft a quarterback in this range, a tight end in this range, because these running backs are really gross. Najee Harris, obviously injured before the start of last season, and that clearly had an impact on his play. He was about as efficient as using a fucking candy bar wrapper as a condom. But at the same time, they still gave him the volume. There's a lot of talks about Matt Canada and Mike Tomlin at the end of the day using Jalen Ward more this season but I will believe it when I see it because every single thing I have seen out of Mike Tomlin his whole career is that he wants the workhorse running back he wants the three down back he doesn't want to fuck around with a running back by committee he wants to give one guy all of the touches now maybe this is the year everything changes again I don't think Najee Harris is that great of a running back but the offensive line should be better he gets some decent pass catching work but there is glaring risk with him and that's the fact that maybe the team realizes Jalen Warren's actually better than Najee Harris but another problem with that argument is that Najee Harris was drafted very highly a couple years ago same can't be said about Jalen Warren and sometimes these coaches just play the player that was drafted higher Keeping going on here in the D tier, continuing on in the D tier, that didn't really make too much sense. Travis, at the end of the Jacksonville Jaguars, there are clear pros and cons with ETN. He could see a lot more work than I think. Tank Bigsby might not be the goal line back, and Travis ETN fixes his pass catching issues. There is also the negatives, the devil on the shoulder that tells you Tank Bigsby is going to be taking a lot of goal line work. Tank Bigsby could be getting 40% of the snaps. Tank Bigsby might be catching the passes because Travis Etienne has butterfingers. 
And then you start to panic. Now this offense might just be so good, like I think they will, so good, so good, like Sweet Caroline, that Travis Etienne just ends up getting so much volume, he's scoring touchdowns, that it doesn't matter even if the snap share isn't great because he's so efficient. He does have a really solid yards per carry number. So again, while I am nervous about ETN, there are some positives to make about the situation. At number 16, we have Brees Hall. Now, Brees Hall is as risky as it gets. There are a couple of arguments to make for Brees Hall. For one, I think if you draft Brees Hall, you have to fully understand that for the first three, four weeks of the season, you probably should not play him. Week one, Week two, week three, I feel like they're going to use the just the tip technique and ease him into the lineup. Now, is he going to score three points in all those games? Probably not, right? But is he going to be a guy you really want to, when push comes to shove, have in your lineup? Probably not. They paid Dalvin Cook eight plus million dollars. You got to follow the money in fantasy football a lot of the time. They are brought him in to get touches. Now, as the season comes to a close, as you're ramping up to your fantasy football championship, Brees Hall might be a league winner. He might be out there getting a majority of the snaps. The Jets are dogging out these defenses, and Brees Hall's fantastic. That's definitely possible. But you have to understand that you could just pass up on Brees Hall and potentially buy him low three weeks into the season. Their schedule also to start off the year is rock solid. It is very, very tough like eating rocks for breakfast. So you have to kind of understand that when you draft him, he could help you win at the end of the season, but he also could sink your ship for the first couple of weeks of the season. Moving now to running back 17, Kenneth Walker the third of the Seahawks. This is a guy that is a great talent, but another guy where they bring in another running back behind him. They draft Zach Charbonnet in the second round. Kenneth Walker last year was a second round pick. Zach Charbonnet, great at catching passes. Kenneth Walker, not so much. How much will Charbonnet play in is the question, right? It's a gamble. Kenneth Walker is good enough to maintain 70 plus percent of the snaps. He is. But what happens if Kenneth Walker gets dinged up, misses a game, Charbonnet balls out, then does Charbonnet take up a much larger piece of the pie of this offense? So again, that's why all the guys in the C tier, B, A, S tier feel a lot more comfortable. That's why a lot of people like to do the double hero running back or the hero running back strategy, right? Get one of those early guys, avoid the confusion in the middle, take a bunch of receivers, and then load up on, sure, there is confusion as we get deeper down into the rankings, but you're getting that confusion at a much lower price. To close out the D tier, Alexander Matisson of the Vikings. I thought Jonathan Taylor might get traded there. The fact that JT is not there is a large positive for Alexander Madison. This is going to be a team that does like to run the ball at a really high, or like to, I should say, I apologize. They, in the past, love to run the ball at a high clip. Now they pass the ball at a high clip because their defense sucks ass. So Alexander Madison will have other competition. He's not the clear workhorse running back on his team, but he's proven that when Dalvin Cook was hurt, and now Dalvin Cook obviously is gone, that he could produce. He could be a lead back in the NFL. The question is, can he maintain such strong efficiency over a large sample size of him being the lead back on the team for the whole year? That is a question, but at the end of the day, Madison is a guy that I feel like he has a lot less risk then Kenneth Walker, but if Kenneth Walker has that great season, right, their team more comfortable running the rock, he probably outscores Alexander Madison. Before we move into the E tier at running back, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor over at Manscaped. It is officially fantasy football draft season, but you do not want to neglect the most important draft pick of them all, your game balls. We all know how injuries can ruin a season, so let Manscaped take care of that Reggie Bush of yours with their skin-safe technology. This should guarantee that you have a smooth ride all the way into the playoffs. The leader in below-the-waist grooming have created a championship lineup with their performance package 4.0, and it's time for you to do the same. Join the 9 million men worldwide who trusted Manscaped and get ready for kickoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off 
plus free shipping with code NOTORIOUS. Make sure you guys check out the link in the video description for that. I've been using Manscaped for a very long time. In the past, I've used some other type of things for that, and it has been a disaster. You end up cutting things that you don't want to be cut, and Manscaped makes sure that does not happen. So again, make sure you guys check that out. Promo code NOTORIOUS for 20% off plus free shipping link in the video description. Back on into things, we move to the E tier, running backs 19 through 25. At number 19, James Conner of the Arizona Cardinals. I was someone all offseason long that was banging the drum for James Conner because if you actually look at the metrics with Kyler versus without, James Conner is one of the best running backs in fantasy football without Kyler Murray. The problem now is it seems like the Arizona Cardinals are in full-on tank mode. They get rid of some offensive linemen. They get rid of Colt McCoy. They don't know who the starting quarterback is week one. They haven't said it yet. This situation seems gross. Now, James Conner has been productive without Kyler Murray. So I think he should be fine. But I think his upside is a little bit limited by the fact that the Cardinals aren't going to be starting a lot of points. And I worry we get three weeks in the season and they trade Hollywood Brown. And this offense is just a disaster like that is the easiest way to describe it a complete and utter fucking disaster at number 20 cam Akers of the la rams another guy that i thought might get cucked by jonathan taylor he survives that there are reports of the backup running back on the team working in more on third down which does hurt some of cam Akers' value but the guy did look so good towards the end of last season i'm not gonna let all of the turmoil from the beginning of the season talk me off of cam Akers. again you're getting him at a discount compared to last season and if stafford and cup stay healthy while i don't think this is going to be a great offense in the nfl they'll be good enough for cam Akers to have some decent fantasy games and be a decent back end rb2 at number 21 can you do something for me david montgomery of the detroit lions now i know but nick you basically got down on your knees for jameer gibbs earlier giving him the gawk gawk 9000 how do you like both of them so much well we mentioned that the detroit lions were one of the best offenses for fantasy points in terms of the running back position we know that when they get on the goal line knock 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 david montgomery's jumping his way in there jamal williams style we know that if something was to happen to jameer gibbs david montgomery is going to fall ass backwards into a humongous workload while he might not be seeing as many pass catching opportunities as he did last year's the chicago bear i think he's still going to get a decent amount of touches game in and game out and with that potential touchdown upside he's a guy that i find it very hard to pass on in drafts at number 22 miles sanders of the carolina panthers now sanders still dealing with an injury sanders in a situation where nick don't you know frank reich said he's gonna catch more balls well last year I can't even remember the running back's name. The guy that got hurt in the jet ski accident. The Colts, Frank Reich himself said, hey, draft this guy in fantasy behind Jonathan Taylor, the backup running back. You drafted that motherfucker, and he didn't really use him. And you know what else happened? He traded him at the trade deadline. All this sucking off of Miles Sanders, for what? For what? I don't believe you, Frank Reich. I don't believe you at all. Could Miles Sanders be decent in Carolina? Definitely. But I'm not here to sing the praises of this guy because I think Chuba Hubbard's going to work in more. I think Chuba Hubbard is a decent running back. I think he's going to get more looks than people think. Miles Sanders is a very scary pick for me at number 23. Shout out Michael Jordan, J.K. Dobbins. Just kidding. Dobbins of the Baltimore Ravens. J.K. Dobbins, another guy that scares the ever-living shit out of me. This is a guy that we've seen in the NFL be incredibly efficient the question is will this team commit to the run like i think a lot of the jk dobbins truthers believe we know the todd monken system is to look to be a little bit more pass heavy he's their offensive coordinator that's new they bring in zay flowers odell beckham jr and they already have rashad master bateman and mark andrews they have a quarterback in lamar jackson who loves to run the football they also have Gus Edwards behind J.K. Dobbins, and we all know that this season could end and Gus Edwards could have way more looks than people want to believe. Again, J.K. Dobbins is a 
great running back. I'm not here to shit on him, right? I'm not here to tell you that J.K. Dobbins stinks because I think he's good. It's just the situation that gives me pause when it comes to truly going all in on J.K. Dobbins. At number 24, James Cook of the Buffalo Bills. Now, if you believe that James Cook is going to be the clear running back one, they're not going to use Damian Harris as much, then James Cook has top 12 running back upside if he gets all those carries. The problem is, when they get near the goal line, you become in the stranger danger of Josh Allen vulturing you and running the touchdown in himself. We also know, we know this to be true, that Josh Allen doesn't love checking the ball down. Now, Josh Allen also hasn't had a running back to check down as skilled as James Cook before, aside from last season. So, again, lots of negatives, lots of positives. As a whole, I'm in on James Cook. But I think at the end of the season, right, if Sanders actually catches passes, he's finishing ahead of of Dobbins and Cook, right? But I think there is a way where Cook wiggles himself into being a top 12, top 14 back. I just don't want to get fucked over again, right? Every year, I talk myself into these Bills running backs. The Bills have this great offense, and then they just don't get enough touches. Again, all of the reports out of camp, though, are very positive towards him getting touches. So it's kind of like a tug-of-war game in my mind back and forth. I do definitely like James Cook, though. Uh, Closing out the E tier, Jonathan Taylor. I'm going to be honest with you. I had a very tough time trying to rank Jonathan Taylor. I think there's a 50-50 chance Jonathan Taylor doesn't play this whole season. I think there's a chance that he comes off the pup and gets shipped to another team and ends up being a league winner. So when it comes to drafting Jonathan Taylor, I am most likely not going to do it, but I can't just have him fall all the way down the draft rankings, all the way to the bottom, because what happens if he gets traded? Or what happens if they magically decide to give him this contract and he's the RB1 on the Colts? While I don't think he's going to come back to the Colts, these are all things that have to be going through your mind when ranking. Again, I'm not drafting him. When he's going in the fifth, sixth round, I'm staying clear away. I'm throwing a grenade and dipping, right? I'm not being anywhere near that shit. But I do get... The upside, because if he gets traded, we're going to all feel like a bunch of fucking morons when he ends up as a top 12 running back for when he's playing. There's also a chance that he's actually hurt and he doesn't play the whole season too. So lots of risk, lots of reward with Jonathan Taylor. He's ranked as the RB25, but you could rank him as low as like the RB50 and I wouldn't even have a crazy argument to be made with you. Moving now to the F tier. If you guys have enjoyed thus far, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button down below. Javante Williams of the Denver Broncos. Now, there are two negatives to talk about with Javante Williams. He might not be fully healthy and might be ramped down for the first couple of games. And the other negative is that Russell Wilson just reeks. He fucking sucks ass. And they can't move the ball very effectively. And Javante Williams falls off the edge of the earth. There's also... Hey, even if Javante Williams misses or doesn't play as much the first couple of games, we saw a lot of pass catching upside for him in the preseason. We know that Sean Payton's a great enough coach to kind of pull some greatness back out of Russell Wilson. So again, lots of negatives, lots of positives. As a whole, though, I am more in on Javante Williams than I think a lot of people are. At number 27, Dalvin Cook. Now, Dalvin Cook could be looked at potentially as like a four-game rental to start the season, right? The first couple of games, if Reese Hall is getting eased in just the tip technique, Dalvin Cook might be a guy dropping his nuts 18-plus fantasy football points for the first couple of games. But... How can you project that on a season-long standpoint? If Brees Hall is truly healthy five weeks into the season, then I think Brees Hall gets the throne back as the RB1 on the team. We shall see. We shall see. Dalvin Cook could end up being a league winner in the 27th pick, or as my RB27, right? He could be a huge league winner going deep in drafts because maybe Brees Hall is more fucked up than they kind of lead on, and Dalvin Cook's the guy. But I also think... Brees Hall is good enough to, once he's fully healthy, to take over as the guy. At number 28, Khalil Herbert of the Chicago, Chicago Bears. I believe Khalil Herbert to be the RB1 on the Bears. Basically, all the reports out of camp are that he is the RB1. Now, that doesn't mean that he's this workhorse, but he should be seeing 60-ish percent of the snaps on the team. Khalil Herbert, when Montgomery was hurt, looked downright incredible. 
question is, can he sustain that through a whole season of being the guy? Now, I think the addition of the offensive line being a little bit better and the addition of DJ Moore opens up this offense a ton. And I think that we're actually going to see Justin Fields improve as a passer entering into this season. I talked about this in a video yesterday. It was pretty much night and day in this offense when you compare the first half to the second half of the season. In the first half, it really seemed like the head coach was trying to just run his offense, right? Do what he's been doing for the last fucking three decades, right? But once they kind of pivoted to, hey, this is how we should run a Justin Fields offense where our quarterback is mobile, right? Then we saw the offense progress. The offense, again, like night versus day. So if Khalil Herbert is the lead back, he should be successful. And I believe in that. But there's still Roshan Johnson. There's still other guys. And obviously, Khalil Herbert could just get vultured on the goal line at any point for Fields. You might think he's handing it to Fields. Not a, or he's handing it to Herbert. It's not a handoff. It's a fake. And fucking Justin Fields runs 90 yards into the end zone, right? So I still like Khalil Herbert, though. Number 29 and 30. We're going to talk about them in tandem. Brian Robinson got shot, but he's still breathing. And number 30, Antonio Gibby Son. I have moved Robinson ahead of Gibson because I started to look towards the end of the season and I really saw how effective Brian Robinson was at the end of last season. Brian Robinson is a significantly safer pick than Gibson. Gibson is going to be in the pass catching opportunities. Brian Robinson is going to be fucking foot in the dirt, run a bitch over, right? He's going to be getting a lot of carries. So if this commander's offense is better under Sam Howell, if this offense under new offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy looks better, then both of these guys could end up being successful. They obviously take away value from each other, right? If Robinson wasn't there, Gibson would get a lot more carries. If Gibson wasn't there, Robinson would probably catch more passes. But I think this could be a symbiotic relationship, and hopefully I'm using that term correctly, where both of them can feed off of each other. Where they mutually benefit from each other. I really like the commander's offense this year, so I like both these guys. At number 31, Alvin Kamara. Nick, how the fuck do you have Kamara at 31 and... Uh, but you have Jonathan Taylor at 25, because I think if Jonathan Taylor gets traded, he just he's younger, he has more upside... I think Alvin Kamara is starting to take a dip in production. Kendra Miller got hurt again today. Shocker, this fucker gets hurt lacing the cleats up. So Kamara could return to a much stronger role than I thought. I know on the goal line they're going with Jamal Williams. I know that Taysom Hill is going to score like 8 to 10 touchdowns. So I start to worry about the touchdown upside of Kamara. But if Kendra Miller misses serious time, we know Alvin Kamara is going to be getting a lot of receiving work. I also just really don't like drafting players that are going to miss the first couple of games of the season, right? Brees Hall could be, like, I don't think it's possible this is going to happen, but we could get to week one, right? Maybe he's kind of eased in week one. Then week two, full blown, all up in that game, right? Mara can't play for the first three games. But Nick, you have dropped the Taylor right tire. I know, because again, I really think that if JT is to get traded, he has way more upside. Now, it's the risk versus the safety argument, right? Jonathan Taylor, way more risky than Kamara. But I think if JT plays, he pays off bigger. So that's kind of a debate to have, right? Who would you rather have? Now, again, I'm not really drafting either of them. Had to rank Jonathan Taylor just a little bit higher because, again, if he comes back, I think he's going to have a great season. I worry about how Kamara is going to look. He didn't look great. He didn't pass the eye test for me last season. And if you had him last year, he was very frustrating to be on your team, especially with how high you drafted him. At number 32, Isaiah Pacheco of the Chiefs. Isaiah Pacheco is a really good running back. We saw that through the playoffs last year when they really started to ramp him up. He looks good, but he doesn't really catch passes. And we know the Chiefs in the red zone like to throw, right? They like to throw it to anyone, right? Kelsey, any of these fuckers can get the ball, right? Which hurts Pacheco because they don't run a lot on the goal line. Pacheco is going to get carries. He will. He'll have a decent year. But can he crack the top 24? Maybe, maybe, but with McKinnon still there, these other running backs, like, I just don't see him getting enough pass-catching opportunity to really be that guy. He's just a guy you draft, and, like, you just hope that something falls his way, right? Maybe on the goal line, they start running more. In the red zone, they try to run more. Uh, maybe we see Pacheco catch more passes, right? There are arguments to be made for him. It's just, it's just at this point, like, it, it just doesn't seem like they, they give enough fucks to use him as much as you would want. Moving now to the G tier. Like a G6, like a G6. Not nah, 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 nah. I'm feeling so fly like a G6. Rashad with two A's white of the Bucks. 
Nick, how the fuck do you have Rashad White rank so low? Rashad White's the clear running back one of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you fucking idiot. Well, Rashad White, he's going to have other guys work behind him. Rashad White, I don't think is that good of a running back. Now, could the Bucs completely upset what everyone thinks, right? Could they be that team that you've never heard of that upset Virginia in the national champ, not in the national championship, in the round of 64 a couple years ago in March Madness? You know what I'm talking about, right? The fucking Golden Retrievers? UNLV, was that their name? That's an actual school. I don't remember their name. But, like, that crazy upset, right? Yeah, I think they could. But at the end of the day, Rashad White isn't going to be the, the full-on guy there. They're going to use other backs. The offensive line sucks dick. It's bad. It's really bad. I don't want anything to do with Rashad White. DeAndre Swift of the Eagles. This is another guy, complete and utter boomer bust. He's a great running back. He's one of my favorite running backs in the NFL. But he's in a system where apparently they love Kenneth Gainwell. They also have Rashad Penny at Boston Scott as well. How much work is Swift going to get? We shall see. And I also believe, even if Swift does get a lot of work, this might be a scenario where every game it's a different running back, right? Like, week one, Swift goes crazy. Week two, you see Gainwell score two touchdowns somehow. somehow. Week three, none of them are good because Hurts runs in a touchdown or two. So, again, I love this offense, so I'm willing to take shots on Swift. But I... There's so much risk in it. It's much more of a best ball pick, right? Where you don't have to actually figure out when to start him. Redraft, where you actually have to figure that out. It's going to be tough. Number 35, Zach Charbonnet. Zach Charbonnet? What the fuck? Cabernet. Zach Cabernet. The fucking wine, the vino of the Seahawks. I love Zach Charbonnet. But there's still that wall to get through. Right? He's still got to break through that hole in the wall and get past Walker to have true success. To me... He's an elite handcuff. That's how high I'll put him. An elite handcuff. If Walker goes down, Charbonnet smashes. If Walker's playing and you have to start Charbonnet, you're praying to the gods he scores a touchdown. Number 36, Jamal Williams. Now with that Kendrick Miller injury, I moved Jamal Williams up some more. Jamal Williams, going to get a lot of work the first three weeks of the season. Then we'll see. How much does Kamara work in? Is Kamara getting the goal line touches? Is it Jamal Williams? What are they going to be doing? So, if you're drafting a guy, say you draft Brees Hall in the fourth, fifth round. Jamal Williams is the perfect guy to pair with him. Because for the first three, four weeks of the season, or the first three weeks of the season, right, while Mr. Kamara is suspended, Jamal Williams is the perfect guy to throw in your lineup. Because for those three games, he's going to flourish. And if you draft Kamara, just draft Jamal Williams. But the question is, after that, how reliable will he be? At number 20, or number... 37, Devin, two chains of the Miami Dolphins. I moved him up. Had to. Jeff Wilson on the IR. And based upon what the Dolphins are saying, I'm scared of Jeff Wilson not coming back. He may be able to return this season. He may be. Not, oh, he will be back soon. No, he may return. He got hurt like a bunch of different ways, right? It wasn't just like, I think I read it was like four different injuries this guy has. And Mike McDaniel didn't want to roll him out. He wanted to hold him back from himself like a, Hold me back type of scenario, right? Because he would, he would, if it was up to him, he would just play and then he'd get hurt again, as Jeff Wilson always does. So this definitely bumps up A-Chain, bumps up Mostert. Both of these guys in stranger danger of Kareem Hunt or Uncle Lenny showing up or Jonathan Taylor four weeks into the season. So I'm still not uber confident in any of them, but what I will tell you is I want one of these guys on every team I have, Right? If I get A-Chain in one, I want Mostert in the other. Because I think there is so much value in this Miami Dolphins offense. There are going to be... Did I just lisp? Mike Tyson? Um, They're going to score a lot of points. Question is, how many points are they... Or not really how many points they're going to score. I know they're going to score a lot of points. The question is, who's going to be the guy? And is it going to be the same guy every single week? Number 39, Samaj P. Ryan. I had to move him down because I think Javante Williams does actually look pretty decent. But we do know Sean Payton loves to use a two-back system. And I think early on in the season, P. Ryan's a guy you could play week one in a deeper league. But, I mean, if Samaje has to be, like, your RB2 in a, de- in, in a regular league, like, that's kind of gross, right? I definitely think in terms of week one gun to the head, Williams versus P. Ryan, I'd probably start P. Ryan. But, again, 
how strong will that value maintain if Williams really starts going balls deep a couple weeks in the season? Number 40, A.J. Dillon. I just bumped him down. I really do like Aaron Jones. A.J. Dillon provides zero pass catching upside. A.J. Dillon's path to fantasy football enlightenment is an injury to Aaron Jones. So with that said, he's a guy, again, if you're in a deeper league, you're in a pinch in a 14-team league, you can start him, but it probably doesn't feel good. All of these guys, right? Like, A.J. Dillon could almost end. E. Ryan, you could argue, could be even a tier below this, right? Definitely feel a little bit more confident in... Confident? Confident in Mostert and A-Chain over them. I don't know, man. I, I like, and I fucking spelled his name wrong, so I look like a fucking idiot. A.J. Dalian. But you get what I mean. When it comes to A.J. Dillon, he is a good running back. He just can't be successful for a multiple game in a row standpoint unless something happens to Aaron Jones. So I bumped him down. I just don't really want A.J. Dillon, if I'm being honest with you. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you did end up enjoying this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Again, make sure you guys check out Manscaped. Link in the video description. If you want my rankings, again, they are $7.50 on the Patreon. They are going to be updated shortly after this video drops. I just have to kind of edit the, the Excel to make it look good. So make sure you guys check that out if you want them. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you did enjoy. I love you guys. We reached 25,000 subscribers a couple days ago. That was awesome. And again, I'm not trying to blow past that. I've just said it a bunch. It is really awesome. I'm so thankful for all you guys. Thank you for everything. And uh, very soon, week one content is coming. We're less than a week away from kickoff, baby. And I am so excited about it. I hope you guys are too. I love you guys all so much. We're going to have the best fantasy football season ever. We're all going to be eating W's like our name was famous, Jameis Winston. Have a great one. See you on the flippity flop. Goop!